Step one, <laughs> don't do fiberglass. <laughs> this is Harry Potter's closet. <laughs> Step two, don't do fiberglass. Covered in dust and uh, pretty itchy right now. Step three, don't do fiberglass. I don't even know if it'll work. As our uh, glue gun crapped out on us. Don't ask me how I know this. My name is Kenna, and this is Jay. We live aboard our Choi Lee Offshore 41. Her name is Sitka. Currently, we are sailing and exploring our beautiful home here on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada. I'm new to sailing, but I'm learning and loving it more and more each day. Jay, on the other hand, was born a salty sailor. As he takes me under his wing to get ready to sail around the world, join us on our adventure of falling in love with the beauty of life and the wonders of each other. Welcome to the story of us, and welcome to Sailing in Sitka. On this week's episode of Sailing Sitka, we transform and remodel our quarter berth into looking like the finished product of our main cabin. We fell completely in love with the results and wanted to share with you the step-by-step -step process of this renovation. So stay tuned. All right, just about to start sanding that back down to glass. So those three spots that are marked. So this edge, center, and then the upper edge where we're gonna then fiberglass some beams into place that are gonna be one inch thick. And then in between, there's gonna be some Armaflex insulation. Similar process that we did in the um, our main cabin. So let's get going. All right, so got the first beam grinding down, second beam grinding down, and third and final beam grinding down. And luckily, we're lucky on this stop, it's already on fiberglass, so I just gave a quick sand. So epoxy's gonna bond to that, so. A little easier than our main cabin, which is nice. I'm uh, covered in dust and uh, pretty itchy right now, but you know, I'll survive. I'll survive. All right, so this is the plywood all marked up and ready for curfing tomorrow. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we have a bit of a height difference here on Sitka. Yeah, so basically what we you just saw in the video there was us curving the, the plywood. So just doing cuts every like two centimeters so that it enables us to be able to bend it. That plywood is half inch thick and we need the insulations one inch thick. So we need to double those up. So we're gonna make beams that are two inch thick wide and then by one inch thick thickness once they're glued together with epoxy and we just did a little a little sketch there like the beams that we need to cut so we're gonna go out there we're just waiting for tiny little bosch 1.5 amp batteries to recharge because by doing all these cuts uh, they just go like crazy so my dream is to get an 8 amp battery because <laughs> that would make life so much easier but yeah, so that's what's going on. Uh, once those are cut, we're gonna go to step three, which is gonna be um, gluing them. So we just use thickened epoxy, so West System epoxy, the faster one, because in Canada, like even in the summer, that works perfectly, because it doesn't get hot enough in Pacific Northwest for the slow cure. And we're gonna mix in some 403 to turn it into a glue. Um, and then after that, we're just gonna use also a hot gun, construction hot gun glue to tack it in place so we don't have to sit there and hold it. Until it's easier? Yeah, it takes like five minutes and then it's there and then cures fully within a few hours later. And that's gonna be it for today. Once those beams are all glued in, then we'll have to wait tomorrow, come back, sand it, give a coat of paint. Um, and then, yeah, we're gonna be ready to uh, get some cedar, 
and like start measuring and cutting and prepping that whole thing while we were waiting for an Armaflex insulation, which is what we put in our main cabin too. So I just ordered more of that yesterday and that should come in in about a week from now. Works wonders. Yeah, it's good stuff. And it, it's like antimicrobial, so like no mold and it's it's a non-absorbent material. So if you do get a leak, which anybody that has boats knows that leaks do happen and it's a constant battle. So when a leak does happen, it'll just leak on top of the insulation and go down and we'll notice a streak and then we can take anything that could leak under the insulation. I've not actually glued the uh, insulation there. I just put it on top like where our sail tracks go and where the stanchion posts are, which there's two in each cabin. So there's three bolt each and then the, the tracks, which are brand new, so they shouldn't leak for a few years. It's butyl tape, so that should be good. But if the stanchions start leaking, we just have to take that apart, re-bed those, and then we can put all that together i just I, I assembled everything so it's like a puzzle so we can take it off and back again but yeah that's it bye <laughs> this guy and then this guy I always keep coffee cans because they make great recipients for mixing glass. Because if you use plastic and you mix too much epoxy, it will actually burn. Like it, the chemical reaction heats up and then you'll burn your plastic right through. Don't ask me how I know that. Well, an unexpected trip to the store as our uh, glue gun crapped out on us. Mid project mode, which is so annoying. That freaking glue gun lasted like two hours. Two hours. Right. Here we go. We found them. Okay. Let's How's the new glue gun treating you? It works. Like a charm. Like a charm. Okay, we are finally showered and got That's the good. epoxy out of my hair and Jay's mustache. I literally had epoxy all in here. Yeah, it was a little bit of a how, nightmare. But I did. So we're currently sanding all the areas that are gonna get some either varnish or paint in the quarter bird. So that's the project for today. So sand, we're gonna clean everything with some acetone and then we're gonna give the first few coats of paint on the beams and the walls. We're gonna use the same yellow we used in our 
main cabin. And it's gorgeous outside for February. Beautiful, beautiful. So just given a coat of uh, leftover bilge coat epoxy paint, just to like, even though it's all epoxy, just to seal it and make it free. Even though we will never see these, just a little added extra step to make sure everything's good to go. So we just finished sanding and painting this entire area. So basically those uh, little beams that you see that are painted white those are the beams we made out of uh, plywood and curved cut so that they match the curvature of the hall and now we just gave them a coat of epoxy paint left over that we had from the shower uh, just for extra protection and we gave our first coat of yellow on this little bulkhead here and the stern bulkhead there and obviously it's gonna look a lot nicer once we get two or three coats on there and then once we get the insulation our reflex gonna go in between these beams and in between the, the top beams, leaving the area where there's tracks or stanchion posts like this with just pressure uh, insulation pushed upon those, not glued on so that if we have leaks in the future or we need to access these, we can just remove the top panel and access those bolts and re them. All right, so just gave the third and final coat of uh, yellow paint in here. Um, we're not gonna bother painting the hall because it's just gonna be insulation that's going to be stuck right to it for uh, the hall and the deck head here so that's bare fiberglass up here and down here it's just painted we scruffed it up with uh, 120 grit sandpaper and degreased it with acetone so whenever we get the insulation it should stick right on there we'll just purchase the this cedar so that's going to be for over here and we're going to turn this little area into something looking a little bit more spiffy like this Let's get started. Put the first beam in place. So basically I cut to size our cedar, which is a two by one by eight foot. Um, so right now I need 78 inches. So I just cut that to shape, then I sand it because it's just rough cut. So I don't know how the planer, so I just use 80 grit sandpaper, sand it all around the edges. And then I just come over with uh, my big drill here and I drill the pilot hole as well with the um, um, bung hole. It's the bung hole drill bit. And then after that, I use this drill and just put in a screw. Putting a six foot three dude in a tiny little cubby hole. This is Harry Potter's closet. <laughs> Since nothing is straight on the boat, you gotta measure every single one. And this one is gonna be 78 and just over. So this is what it looks like with all the wood in place. I just cleaned everything with uh, mineral spirits. So it's been sanded, cleaned with mineral spirits, and now we're going to apply the first coat of the varnish. So this is the varnish I use for all the interior brightwork. 
I like the high gloss finish, so that's what I use. And I usually do the first coat around 50% varnish, 50% thinner. And then as I do progressive coats, I put less and less thinner and more and more varnish. And then the last final coat is usually about 95% varnish and only 5% thinner. And I always use a foam brush. Currently sanding, so we already had the first coat in there of varnish, and now we're giving a little quick sand at 220 everywhere. And then we're gonna varnish these puppies. And then we found the trim pieces too, so I just gave them a coat at 120, and now we're gonna give a coat at 220 so they get their first coat of varnish. Woo! At this point, G is repeating this tedious process of sanding and varnishing the wood while he completes seven coats total. While finishing and patiently waiting for the insulation to arrive, Jay took it upon himself to build a shoebox, doubling as a tool storage compartment, all while I was at work. Don't worry, I'm sure that there will be an episode containing Jay's concept behind this mini project. But for now, we wait. Hopefully only for a short while. In the meantime, enjoy the look of the beautifully varnished cedar antique. When you don't have a truck and you're doing boat work, <laughs> the truck comes inside the car. Look at my hair. Yeah, it's staticky. So we got this foam for the bottom, then we have Armaflex back there that took three weeks to get. That's why we're gonna have to do this till midnight tonight and edit to release the episode, second episode tomorrow. Tomorrow morning! And we both work in the morning. Now, let's see if we measured properly. Oh, no, we did. Damn, I like the glove. All right, so now the peel ply is still on there, but I want to dry fit it first, because once you put that on, it ain't coming off. And like the astute viewer would notice that if you come close, this stuff is one inch thick, but this is just a sixteenth under one inch. And the reason why I wanted this to not be as proud as this is that while screwing the wood lats on there, it's going to compress this even more to make sure that the adhesive, even if there's a little void that I can't push through, is actually going to push it against the hull so there's no air between the insulation and the hull where moisture could form and mold and all that stuff. Scary part? That's the scary part. Perfect. So we only have to cut one way. Twenty-six. 
24 through. This is going to be a bit longer here, 25, 25 and a half. Here, basically, what we're doing is we're putting it between the jib track, well, the Genoa track, and the. Um, we have a bunch of electrical wires here, so obviously, I don't want to stick insulation over it and then have to deal with it later and not be able to remove. And same goes for the track. Like at one point, it's gonna leak. And it's a boat, so we'll have to remove it and rebed it. So I make sure that this and these wires are still accessible. And then we'll just have this insulation here, but without taking the peel ply off, and it'll just be pressure fit with the headboard that we're going to put in place here. So, yeah. So we just finished uh, putting the insulation and then we reinstalled all the cedar beams and then did the rough finish of the headliner that's hiding the insulation. And now I'm just going to add some just normal pink foam and I'm thinning it so it goes on here and obviously the lids are going to have cutouts glued on top of them so we can access them. It's a bit overkill because nobody really sleeps here on a regular but we're gonna do it the right way. And then we're gonna wire in some lights, but it's 9 p.m. and we gotta release this episode uh, tonight for tomorrow morning, so wish us luck. All right, well, we still haven't wired the lights yet because um, it's late, so I'm actually gonna sleep now. <laughs>
I'm done. I'm done with this project for today. We're gonna finalize all the little details later, but looks good. It's a huge difference. It's all insulated. I'm six foot three, and I fit in here. Now we got my little tool chest right here, which I like. I can grab my shoes, which is nice <laughs> for when you sleep. Yeah, and then <laughs> some whoever's sleeping here like has this as a little nightstand. And then we'll put a little pole here. And then there'll be a curtain. I'll have a little more trim pieces here. Yeah. I think all in all, it's a nice upgrade. It's a nice upgrade. And then it matches our cabin too. So when you walk in the boat, it looks like the sleeping quarters are similar. Well done. Good night. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please hit the like button down below. It really helps us out. And uh, please leave us a comment and tell us what you think about the video. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You Bye.